nice looking design right there. Anyway, I hope your day has been well. Let's get ready to play some cards. And I love this type of deck. I'll get into a story fairly soon. But first, let's put away our jokers and extras in their box. Shuffle up our cards and let's begin. And as we do, mentally think of something this deck reminds you of. For me, it reminds me of picnic tables at a restaurant or seafood. Hot dogs, fish and chips, french fries. Let me know what it does for you. I think that's pretty accurate for where I'm at. Oh, I just love this, this little checkered feeling on the side. Let's get into our first game of the night and get things started. I can't believe it that we're already almost at our next special. I knew the 600s and the um, later part of the 500s would be a little bit of the dog days, I guess. But after that, we are going to pick it up. And I am just in disbelief for already almost three quarters through our 500s. As there we have our start to the night. Nice and jumbo. And let's do this. Alright, so these cards for me have a very close spot to my core memories. My heart. Childhood. Happiness. And let me share why. As we have triple threes to begin the night. As some of you may know, the person who introduced me to playing cards, card games, deck collections was my uncle. My uncle used to, wait a second, I feel like I did only, yeah, that's the third. My uncle would watch over me quite a bit when I was younger, since I had to go to my grandparents' house. And at the time, my grandfather was sick with cancer, and my grandmother could not give her full attention towards me. Understandably so. So my uncle stepped up and decided to watch over me and play some cards with me when I was younger. And what we would do almost all throughout the day would be play rummy, play blackjack, and play with different decks. And I remember he had several different brands of playing cards in his I think, like, playing card chest or box drawer. Bicycle being the most consistent. Actually, no. I think B was the most consistent brand. And then, Bicycle, B, and Aviator are the ones I remember. There's this one special deck that came with four jokers that was really fun, since in Rummy, jokers can be a wild card, being anything on the field as we get our first fat stack of the night. And it was just a very fun time playing cards and the B deck. At the time, I didn't enjoy the checkered look too much, but in all honesty, it isn't too bad. It 
it's quite pleasing and enjoyable. And honestly, while saying that, I did get a bit choked up because sometimes I speak without really saying much or sometimes I speak without thinking too much. And due to just, you know, life growing up, I've come to realize a lot of things that I probably didn't know. And I think that's where I just realized my uncle did watch me because of that situation I said, and I never knew that. And I didn't realize it until now. That was most likely the case. And it's kind of interesting how your brain pieces things together or can figure it out without you even knowing. And it's just very heartwarming, but also sad. It's just a mixture of emotions. I wasn't quite expecting to have, as we had our second fat stack, by the way. I don't know. I'll probably think about that later, but anyway, let's focus on our first game. As we have quite the set at us. And it looks like we have to see what we can do, as we cannot move the clubs. And we have a spade. So, it looks like our night, our first game of the night is done. As we can no longer build on either side, so just for a double check. Nowhere for that si oh wait a second. And one more time through. Nowhere for that ten. And nowhere for that nine. Pretty good start, but just a couple fours and a two of club short. Let's clean it up and move on to game number two. All right. What else can I... What's a story that could connect with this deck? Got one. I got one. Okay. So, around, I think, middle elementary school, I would occasionally go with my parents to a casino to eat a buffet. And then afterwards, sometimes they would decide to go to gamble afterwards. And I think they would give me $5 or so for the kids' playroom. And that any kid knows $5 wouldn't last more than five minutes. Unless you got really lucky with the games. But the games at the casino for the kids were fairly expensive. So I really couldn't do anything but just hopefully wait for them to be done fairly quickly. And I remember I would save my money and hopefully at the end go to the gift shop and maybe buy a snack instead or a deck of cards. And most of the time, my parents wouldn't mind stopping at the gift shop for me since I waited like several hours to do anything. And what I would do is, in my brain, I thought, why would I spend $5 on an arcade game that won't last me more than 30 seconds when I could go to the gift shop and buy myself a deck of cards for about 50 cents? And it, the cool thing about them is that those decks in the gift shops are game-used decks for poker it, at that casino. They have to do something with all the new decks they get. So what they do to make them safe for purchases, they trim the edges so someone can't come back in the casino after buying a deck at the gift shop and use them in a game. And it would be nice to collect all these different decks, color variations, and slight, um, just standard variations in the cards. And I remember one time, I think my parents 
guys might have felt a little bad for doing what they did. So they gave me more money to have fun, I guess, in the kids' area. And I remember, this is when I, they would give me their phone so I could call them and check in on them or whatever. And I wasn't obnoxious with it. I think I called about every half hour or so just to see if they were done yet. And I think they gave me $20 to start that time and said, don't bug us for an hour. Because, you know, money fixes everything type of joke. And I remember after the first hour, I asked, are you done yet? And the answer was no. So what they did was give me another $5 for the kids arcade and I kept calling every half hour and every half hour I would get another five dollars so at the end of the day I got forty dollars from just waiting for them at the casino in the play area and for those of you who don't know in most casinos you can't be under eight wandering on your own. You'd need an adult or supervision type of situation. So I was stuck in this very dainty, small kids play area. And I think I'd just sit down against the wall and just wait. Sometimes I'd just sit in a, I think, like a, a racing simulator and just watch the um, CPU drive around. But then I thought, you know what? With this money, I could buy myself a Lego set. Because we know that stuff's expensive. So I thought it was worth it at the time, but... It's just a little different. Now, before smartphones were really introduced or integrated to pretty much everybody. How bored it used to be hours doing nothing back then really didn't feel like too much but now I guess it's not too bad but it could be very very boring as this is the end of our second game King Queen nowhere to go no building left on the field on to game number three do any of you have a similar type story experiences than that. I know some friends would have similar things happen to where the double nines, they would go out of town, double sevens, and they were kind of the afterthought, double twos, double aces, triple aces, triple twos. Nasty. But that makes a little bit more sense. We didn't travel much at all throughout my life, so it kind of, I didn't get the opportunity to be um, bored out of town, really. I would have times where I'd go, but it'd be more of an objective. With my brother and I, and sister, we had gone to town, too. So if you have any similar stories, let me know. Be interesting to read those. It sounds kind of messed up thinking about it, but we'll move on. All right, game number three. Here we come. Honestly, this deck isn't too bad. Let's actually jump into a deck rating to change tides. So the feel is pretty good. It's not distracting. It's bold. Simplistic design. Excellent deck for blackjack, poker. I honestly prefer jumbo index cards. Just because it looks a little more... What's the word? Formal, I guess. So it's not like a 
special deck to where it'd be like a high ranking. But compared to a regular deck of bicycle cards, I think this deserves a 7. It's just all around solid, nothing too wowing, but definitely nothing against it. Maybe some of you might not like the checkering, but I think the jumbo cancels that out fairly quickly. My goodness, I just thought about the casino food. And just thinking how in my family food was treated kind of like a reward at points. And how nasty it would be looking back at it. I remember I, I would go to the casino and be like, oh yes, it's buffet time. And load up the plate. And you know in TV shows or movies, when parents say, don't worry about it, get anything you want as much as you want. That's exactly what happened there. And, you know, guys, boys, they have this thing about competitive eating for whatever reason. When they say as much as you can eat, I think most of us think, all right, time to get to work and see how much we could do as well as when you're older. All you can eat, you want to get your money's worth. So, I remember as gross as it was as a kid, I would get about four or five slices of pizza, two or three pieces of fried chicken, and by the way, this food kind of sucks looking back at it, a hamburger, or I should say a cheeseburger. some macaroni and cheese. I think two to five cones of soft serve ice cream. As we have yet another fat stack, I believe our third one on the night. Kind of funny getting a fat stack while talking about being a fat ass. Um, remember, I'm like ten years old eating this. Ooh, it's actually wait for that. I'm not sure how many cards we played. What else would I have? Sometimes they would have, I think, specialty cuts of meat to where I would try some, like, prime rib, but they would portion it out for you and make you feel guilty if you got more, even though it was all you could eat. I know I'm missing something. Oh, a brownie or a cookie, as if the ice cream wasn't enough. How can I forget the mountain of toppings of sprinkles, chocolate chips, cookie bites, or something like graham crackers, Oreos, and the like with each cone. I know I'm missing something. Oh, I think breadsticks, maybe, as we have our fourth fat stack of the night. As just speaking of how I used to eat makes me want to have a, I think, gastric bypass surgery. Um, there's something else I'm missing. It has to be something fried and cheesy. Ooh, you know what? Let's start building. Anyway, I probably ate about 4,000 calories in at that young of an age and was encouraged to do so. That's America for you. Eat till you can't eat anymore or until your body can't take anymore, in a sense. And just in case you took that 100% seriously, not all of America is like that. Just about 94%. A joke, once again. Sometimes it's tough to tell when someone's joking, when you can't see their facial expressions. And if you can 
can see mine right now. It is actually fairly happy with some surprise as we have won our first game of the night on our third game. So that's pretty freaking cool. I think it's our third anyway.
like she has so much sass in that face. Like, yeah, that's right, you couldn't get me. Double queens. Double threes. Triple threes. Double nines and double tens. So triple threes. When we had triple fours. Stay safe.